Welcome back everyone to another Weather at a Glance video. In today's forecast, we are going to be going over our first preliminary spring forecast for the spring season of 2023, all coming up in just a bit. All right, and on our first slide, we're going to be taking a look at that temperature anomaly map here. Now, what this is going to be showing you is what kind of temperatures you're going to be dealing with this spring, whether that's going to be above or below. Those can also range from slightly above to slightly below or well above average and well below. Now, for today's forecast, what we have so far and what we're looking at for the south, we're going to start in the south uh, south central and southeast United States today as well as the southwestern um, so basically the whole entire southern United States here uh, what we see with this into the spring season is we have a slightly below average region here this is included in this lighter orange here that you can see that I'm circling right now now this goes up into uh, portions east of the Sierra Nevada mountains all the way throughout the southern United States through Texas throughout the south central United States and all the way into the southeastern United States now, this type of pattern is typical with the ENSO neutral pattern, which is what we're moving into this spring. Um, if you look at the type of ENSO forecast here with the 3.4 region here, we are looking at moving away from La Nina and into ENSO neutral this spring. So that's what we're looking at so far. And then we have chances to move to El Nino in the summer, but we'll get into that later as we move into the later months of the spring. Now, for right now, what you can see is we have that slightly above average temperature region here for the southern United States and basically this isn't really going to be too noticeable for y'all down there but this is definitely going to be something that you can see um, noticeable analytically wise so basically you aren't really going to feel much of a difference but if you look at the temperatures based on past years this may be a little bit warmer this is just slightly above a few degrees warmer on average nothing too extreme now moving up into the northern United States here we're going to start off in the Pacific Northwest here and as you can see we have this slightly below average region so again like the slightly above average region this isn't going to be noticeable but you will likely see some slight decreases in temperature number wise so basically if you look at your temperatures on a daily average they're they will likely be slightly below average according to what we're seeing so far. This also uh, is considered for portions of the north central United States and the northeastern United States as well. Uh, this is going to steer clear of coastal areas, so we're not really expecting that for the coastal areas simply because they tend to have kind of an average climate along there. We're going to expect warmer conditions along the northeastern Atlantic coast. Again, nothing above average, but just typical conditions here. Um, but as you move further north, that may change. Now, as you can see, this is just slightly below average, so nothing too extreme. This includes the cities of St. Louis, Omaha, Rapid City, and Seattle, as well as Portland. So basically what you're expecting is nothing too extreme of below average, but just a slightly colder spring. Now, moving into our final region here, this is going to be focused up in the north central United States here. We're going to start off over Montana and make our way down, uh, down to Illinois here and then around the Great Lakes. So as you can see, this includes much of the northern United States here. Um, and this is typical with an ENSO neutral pattern. So again, we, we've seen this with La Nina. Now we're still going to hold on to this in the ENSO neutral year. This is a good chance that there's a good chance that this is going to happen this spring, and we are expecting colder conditions for much of these areas. Now, again, you will get warm sectors up into the northern region, which means you will get warm fronts. You will get warm air uh, with that warm air infection from the Gulf of Mexico. There may be some days that are warmer than others, but this generally means for the most part that most of your days are going to be colder this spring until we move into the summer months. All right, now moving on to our next map, we're taking a look at that precipitation anomaly. Now, much like the temperature anomaly, it's going to tell you what can vary, except this time it's going to be about precipitation. Now, first, we're going to start off in the western United States and as well as the Great Plains here. We're going to start off with this yellow region, and this is going to indicate slightly below average precipitation. Now, this again is typical with ENSO neutral years, and we're taking a look at this extending into the Great Plains here. Uh, a lot of drier weather for the Great Plains which may hinder storm development and severe weather for the Great Plains as we move throughout the spring months. Now, again, this isn't going to be anything too noticeable. Like we said with the slightly above average and slightly below average temperature anomalies, we're looking at this with the precipitation, and this is going to be a slightly decrease. So you're not really going to notice anything uh, to the eye, but in numerical measurements, you will likely notice a decrease in in precipitation by a couple inches so uh, generally we see this and as well over here in the Atlantic coast here 
we see down for portions of Florida and then as well as along the Carolinas and along the Atlantic coast. This is also typical for ENSO neutral year. So we're definitely going to see a little bit of a decrease with this if this pattern continues the way that we're supposed to get it. And we will see some slightly uh, decreased precipitation along the coastline over here along the Atlantic coast as well as over here in the western and central United States. Now moving on to the next region, we're going to be taking a look at that below average. This is where you will start to notice a change. So over here we have first the coast of California. Uh, you can see that anywhere down from San Diego all the way up into northern California, we're really going to be seeing those decreased values and it's generally just going to be a lot drier for those areas. So this is typical. This is the dry season for California as we move from winter into spring. Now, there has been some slight increase in precipitation over time, but I still am feeling confident in the decrease in precipitation. So basically, little to no precipitation for California throughout the entire spring season as of now. That is what we're seeing. Again, we're going to do our final spring forecast here in a couple weeks before the spring season starts. But as of right now, we're expecting drier conditions along the west coast of California. And this also goes over here for the East Coast as well, surrounding areas of Southern Maine, all the way down to New York City and into New Jersey. These areas are also typically experiencing drier conditions in ENSO neutral years. And what we're expecting right now is we can see that for cities of Boston and New York City, we are expecting some noticeably drier conditions uh, during the spring season. So that could be a potential for the spring season. So likely less rain showers and more drier conditions as we move forward into the spring season. All right, now on the flip side, we're going to be taking a look at that slightly above average region over here. So we see for Seattle and Portland, those areas similar to the colder region, that is very similar. We're looking at slightly above average precipitation. Now, again, nothing too noticeable for these regions. We also see for the mountains up here, um, the Northern Rockies over here in Idaho, uh, Wyoming and Montana. All these areas can expect some slightly above average precipitation as well, typically with ENSO neutral years. Um, and as well as over here from Minnesota, all the way down through much of the uh, eastern half of the United States, we see a slightly above average precipitation down into eastern Texas and then up through Alabama up through the Dixie Alley and up through the eastern half of the United States here, we see a lot of these areas are covered in this slightly above average precipitation region. So again, this is not going to be anything too noticeable, but numerically, we are expecting some slightly increased precipitation. Now for our final region here, we have this little area of above average precipitation. This is where you are going to notice some increased precipitation over the course of the spring season. Now, typically in La Nina years, we see a lot of precipitation accumulation for these areas in the southeastern United States. But now we are also expecting this to continue. We have that jet stream pattern that goes through the trough. Over in the west, we see that developing trough, and this moves east with those low-pressure systems. And then we see that ridging in the east that's going to kind of keep the east coast dry. Um, but we are going to see the jet stream carry these low-pressure systems and rain up throughout this region. We're going to get a lot of rain over here, I do believe, throughout the spring months. So this is going to be a definitely stormy and rainy region throughout our spring season as of now. With that being said, we are now going to look at our severe weather forecast region. Now, this map is going to give you an idea of where you can expect the main severe weather events to occur. Now, I do want you to keep in mind that severe weather events can occur outside this region. We may see some later in the May occur up in the Northeast. We may see some occur up in the Northern Great Plains, but generally this is where you're going to see the most of the severe weather happen in the spring season of 2023. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at our first region here. Um, and we're going to take a look at this lighter red region that pretty much surrounds anywhere from Texas all the way up into the Northern Great Plains. And then we see it continue over in the Michigan and all the way into the eastern half of the United States here throughout the Mid-Atlantic and down throughout the southeast United States. This region is going to be your bare bones basic start to the severe weather. Here, you can generally expect severe weather events maybe a couple throughout the spring. And as we move progressively into the summer months, that may increase. But right now, this is basically your first region that you can expect. So if you're within this region, you can expect some severe weather. Um, and as we progress throughout the spring, that may that risk may progress as well. Now, moving on to our next region, this is only going to increase. This is kind of where you start to see those more widespread severe weather events. This is where things amp up a little bit from the basic severe weather region here. Um, this includes all the way up to, into portions of northern Illinois, um, including Chicago 
and this also includes portions of southwestern Pennsylvania. We see a lot of warm air get up there with that warm air advection before it hits the mountains. And then we also see down here into the southeastern United States, including portions of Florida and Georgia. Now, moving on into our next region, we have this darker color here. And this again is only increased at this point. This moves eastward. And instead of including the Great Plains, we are going to see this move a little bit eastward because those drier conditions out in the Great Plains may hinder some of that storm development. We are expecting some drier conditions over there, mainly keeping the humidity out in the eastern United States. This stays below Chicago and comes out through Ohio. Again, Ohio seems to be getting a lot of that severe weather this season up throughout the Ohio Valley um, and along the Mississippi River Valley. And finally, the most intense region out of all of these, this is where you expect the majority of the severe weather to happen this season. This is going to stretch from portions of Houston, Texas, all the way throughout the eastern half of Texas, and then up through southeastern Oklahoma, up through southeastern Missouri, uh, through the southern portions of Illinois and Indiana, and then into southwestern Ohio, and then back down through the majority of the southeastern United States over here, including Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. A lot of these areas are going to get a lot of those strong storm tracks. Again, when we saw that above average precipitation there for a lot of these regions, this also includes a lot of humidity, and we get those increased temperatures, those large warm sectors of really warm temperatures that come through. Um, this is just going to be a general area where we're going to see a lot of that storm development come through. And with that track, that storm track with the jet stream, this is likely an area where we're going to see a good bit of storm development um, when those low pressure systems do trek through. I want to thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. I would ask you consider subscribing for more U.S. forecasts free of charge, and I would ask you consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.